fall camps are open all over the country. We got Scoop, we got Intel, we got about as deep a network of team insiders to rely on as can possibly be found. And therefore, we're going to go all over the country, and we do it every show in August. What about Texas? I didn't talk about them the other night. So you know A.D. Mitchell transferred from Georgia to Texas, and he is one of several really, really good receivers they could have out there. Now, if you watched Sark at Alabama, or you've watched Sark, period, he's a very, very good play caller, and when his offense has the requisite skill at wide receiver, it can be lethal. You may say, well, Josh, anyone's lethal when they have skill at wide receiver. Not like Steve Sarkeesian. Uh, go back and watch the 2020 season at Alabama for reference. Well, I'm telling you that to tell you, I was looking at Chip Brown stuff the other day and talked to him today on the phone, actually, from Horns 24-7. And I said, Chip, how legit does that wide receiver room look? He said, very, very legit. And also, talking to some folks around the Big 12 and the coaching community, they'll tell you this is the first year out of three that Sark's been there now that he's got legitimate depth in his receiver room to be able to call plays like he wants to. And he likes to roll with a four-man rotation and really lean on those four. Did it at Bama. He'll do it at Texas. Xavier Worthy, yep. A.D. Mitchell transferred from Georgia to Texas, yep. Jordan Whittington's out there. And also Isaiah Nayer, the injury kept him out of last year. He'll be there. And look, you've got names behind them. Casey Kane not only is a great stock car driver, he's also a sophomore receiver for uh, Texas. And Jonte Cook, true freshman, five-star. He's in the house too. But those top four, if you're watching on YouTube, those top four names, those will be feature names. But here's the other thing you need to pay attention to with Texas, because that's going to – I'm on TV right there, by the way. That's going to get a lot of run. The receivers and the quarterback position and offense is going to get a lot of run. Do you remember the name Jalen Catalan? I was up in Fayetteville last year in week one when they played Cincinnati, talking about Arkansas. And Jalen Catalan was one of the players that went down for the year at safety. And Arkansas' season sort of took a spill along with it, although they won that day. Catalan transferred to Texas, and I don't think a lot of people remember this. That's the guy they're looking at in practice. That's the guy they're looking at along with Jaron Thompson at safety. If Catalan's healthy, and they think he is, he is such a difference maker for Texas. I mean, they've had to rotate other positional guys to safety over the last few years. If they don't have to do that, and if they've got two very experienced and very dependable and very physical players, especially in Catalan's case, on the back end, that makes a huge difference for Texas, and hardly anyone's going to be talking about it because it's all about offense out there right now. Jalen Catalan, one of the most important names in the Big 12, and because it's Texas and where they're going to be ranked preseason, maybe one of the most important names that you won't hear a lot about in the Big 12 and college football playoff races. What about Tennessee? Let's go over to Knoxville for just a second. The transfer portal was a big topic of conversation, obviously all throughout spring, but some of the names I think slipped through the cracks. For instance, I don't think that you see many people plastering John Campbell Jr.'s name across the front of a preview magazine. It's no disrespect to him. It just wasn't a premier name. But he's going to possibly start at a premier position for Tennessee. Started 12 games at offensive tackle for Miami last year. 6'5", 320, transferred to Tennessee. And both of their offensive tackle spots are kind of open. Now, they've got three or four guys they're looking at, so it's not that they're without options but they need SEC caliber options and they've been both fingers crossed hopeful John Campbell Jr. is going to be that granted we're through like one two or maybe three fall camp sessions depending on where we're talking about they got him running with the ones over there in Knoxville and so far so good again just understand I'm saying that with my fingers crossed you got to look past Joe Milton I don't even I don't even talk a lot about the high profile quarterbacks in this segment this time of year because you can get that anywhere. Need to look past that. Uh, Joe Milton will need to heavily depend on guys like this to pan out, and therefore Josh Heupel in Tennessee's hopes and dreams will largely be attached to guys like him. Speaking of which, that transfer portal, it didn't do any favors to the perception of Oklahoma State, right? Had a lot of guys go out, and we covered the other side of that. If you're an Oklahoma State fan, I have talked on this show about how maybe the situation not quite as dire as it initially seemed on the outside when it comes to the portal exodus out of Stillwater. Well, the fact does remain your starting quarterback left in Spencer Sanders, and he would be their starter if he was still there this year. I don't think anyone's arguing that. Now, where the, 
the discrepancy comes in, maybe where the point of contention comes in, is they got Alan Bowman from Michigan by way of Texas Tech. Welcome to Portal Life. And they would argue in a glass half full or a chalice half full sort of manner, they would argue he's going to be good enough. He just needs to get his shot. Who is Alan Bowman? See, a lot of us who cover the sport year round take for granted. Everyone just knows who that is. Well, he committed to Texas Tech in 2018. He's 6'4", 205. He started 16 games over three seasons. Didn't light the world on fire. He goes up to Michigan for a couple of years, doesn't do anything up there, and now he's transferred to Oklahoma State. There is always the camp that believes you've got a diamond in the rough and he was just in the wrong depth situation, probably should have transferred somewhere other than Michigan. And if he had done that, he already would have blown up. But lucky us, he's here in Stillwater now and he's going to be more than serviceable. You may be right. I don't think Mike Gundy's an idiot. I think he knew what he was doing when he took him. But here is why I'm paying special attention to him. I don't know at tailback that they're anywhere close to what they have been in some years past. Not poor. They're just going to have to rely on some inexperienced guys to lead the way there. And if they don't get that, you know, if Oklahoma State gets average running back production by their standards, well, then all of a sudden, not only do you need Alan Bowman to shine, you need him to disproportionately shine and carry a lot of the load that otherwise would have been carried by those running backs. That is something we're monitoring in fall camp. I want to be sure you understand what I just said. I didn't say running back is a weakness. I said it's a big question mark. Mike Gundy has kind of said as much in his media availability out there. There was one name we were paying close attention to with Ohio State. Quarterback, obviously, but as it relates to the portal, they went and they got Josh Simmons. Remember, that was the tackle from San Diego State. We came out of spring and everyone understood Ohio State's going to be a title contender if they address the offensive tackle position. And they addressed it. You know, Paris Johnson and Dewan Jones head off to the NFL. You have to fill really, really big shoes there. So they went and got Josh Simmons from San Diego State. All right, so now the way the casual mind works is, okay, well, when I check my first Buckeye practice report from Dave Biddle and the folks over at Bucknuts, Josh Simmons will have just seamlessly slid right in there with the ones, right? No, he's running with the threes because he's never practiced there before. This is post-spring. They added him. And so it may be a little shock to the senses for those unfamiliar with how actual college football practices work to see that he's running with the threes. Now, here's the other thing. I'm not even telling you he's guaranteed to start. I'm just telling you I don't think he'll run with the threes very long. Luke Montgomery, though, is in the mix there as well. And Biddle and the folks over at Bucknuts have spoken glowingly about the progress and potential production now that could be in Luke Montgomery's future. So there are options there. I don't know that there are all Big Ten caliber options, but there are options there. And that's not even to start talking about the quarterback position because we'll do that later. And since so many of you sadistic-minded folks amongst us wanted me to touch on this, yeah, Iowa State's got a little quarterback situation. Yeah, the QB decided to throw a few shekels on games he's not legally allowed to bet on. Yes, I've read the headlines. No, I will not give you the satisfaction of going in depth on it. All I'm ready to say on the record is we may be looking for a new starting quarterback up at Iowa State. That's all I'm ready to say right now. That's my official statement. And then I want to also add, it's a skill versus experience thing up there right now. And the skill, I think, lies with J.J. Cole. Colin's going to show you a picture in a second. And I'm going I'm to explain to you what you're looking at in J.J. Cole. But Rocco Becht, it's one of those B-E-C-H-T. So you go Becht, you go Becht, you go Becht, whatever. Uh, that's the guy who was the backup last year. Now, he's got the experience. He knows the system. J.J. Cole's a freshman. I and Steve Wolfong have some experience with J.J. Cole. Now, J.J. Cole's listed at 6'7", 230. Sometimes you think that people overhype themselves and their their height in the media guides. Well, that is J.J. Cole as a rising high school senior. If you're listening on podcasts, just just imagine me, Steve Wolfong, and then basically a skinny ogre with good hair, because that's J.J. Cole. He, He sauntered over there. He's got a giraffe-like build, but handles himself wonderfully. In fact, one of the things that stood out to me when we watched him in Elite 11 is he's massive, but yet he doesn't look weird. He doesn't look herky-jerky like he carries that 6'7", and whatever he weighs, 230. He carries it very well. He doesn't look awkward. Some really, really tall kids look awkward in high school. 
he is ultimately going to be the answer up there. I don't know if he's going to start immediately, but he's ultimately going to be the guy. So J.J. Cole's season may be upon us a little bit earlier than anticipated or Rocco Becht in the meantime. And that's how I'll choose to pronounce his name indefinitely. But yeah, fall camp. We're getting ever closer, friends, to the first series of those scrimmages. And as you know, anyone who's watched the show for any length of time knows, yes, there's nothing like a Sunday late kick after a week of college football games. But you don't even have to wait until week one. Because when we have those Sunday shows and we have scrimmage intel, it's, it's like if I wore sleeves, it would be time to roll them up. It is a beautiful, beautiful time of year. And if you're tired of focusing on conference realignment, take my word for it. There's real-life practice going on and real-life depth chart moves being made. And we will, uh, in a paper-popping fashion, be here for it. 